We are on the verge of World War III right now. This little game we're playing with Putin, who, by the way, isn't confused. They're not confused about what a man is over there. No, no, no. Russians know what a man or a woman is. They, they truly do. They're not very progressive. Who's building more churches and mosques in this world right now than anybody else? Putin. Putin. Am I going to say that I love Putin and he's the, he, I'll tell you what, that man has more honor in his fucking pinky than Joe Biden or Rishi Sunak has in their entire body. When you listen to that man talk, it makes sense. But when you're a mind-controlled, stupid, willfully ignorant population who's making a little bit too much money and a little too comfortable, I've said it, I say it again, comfort is the real enemy. That's why we should seek discomfort. Put yourself in uncomfortable positions. Become comfortable. Become capable in uncomfortable positions. Because when you get really comfortable, you know, now you don't want to risk your comfort. Like, well, no, don't rock the boat. No. But when you're uncomfortable, like the people on the street, look at the homeless out there. This country, it's dripping with money, dripping with money. And there's homeless everywhere, many of them veterans as well. And we turn a blind eye. If you go back to Germany under the Weimar German Republic, where the Deutschmark was worth nothing, that's where we're going right now. That is where we are going right now. And people who, the divide between rich and poor, the gap, where's that going? How do we accept this? How did we ever accept? I remember thinking as in my 20s, like, you know, we didn't really have billionaires back then. You know, they, they were like hundreds of millions was like kind of top at that point. But I remember thinking like, why doesn't one of these like multi, multi millionaires like just take a few mil or, you know, a hundred mil out of his little budget and leave six, seven hundred, hundred million left and go feed these starving people, or, or maybe, I've said it in Iran on a lecture I gave, like, if I had billions of dollars, you know what the first thing I would do is? Clean drinking water for everybody. Everyone. They don't have that in Gaza, by the way. Clean drinking water. Why is it that humanity is so far gone that we're happy, if we're in our own little private Idaho, we're happy to turn a blind eye to any atrocity, and then even excuse ourselves or deny the fact that when I went out, when you go out and buy this avion in this country right now, there's some tax on that. Where's that tax going? That's going to genocide right there. That's a fact. We are funding genocide. We are complicit with genocide. And our representatives, literally, they represent us. This is not a dictatorship, right? These representatives, they represent the will of the people. You know the democracy that represents the will of its people more than any other? I'll end it with this, Lee. You know which nation has a democracy that actually, it's not really a democracy, but let's just say that it is. Let's go ahead and accept their argument that it is. Do you know what nation respects the will of its people more than any other nation? Literally, Israel. Because you know what the populace, the constituents of Israel want? 85% plus want them to X Gaza, to forcefully displace or even nuke. They've said it, Amalek, remember Amalek, we're dealing with human animals. 85%. Think about that. How many people here in this country would prefer to see a ceasefire and an end to the war? Can we safely say it's a majority? But why are all the politicians excusing genocide and, and making excuses for Israel? Wait, why? Is this Israel? Are we in Israel? Or are we in England? I'm sorry. Why is our policy so lockstep in line with the Jewish state of Israel? And my, my nation too and all the other European nations in Australia and New Zealand and all of them. The only ones that aren't is the country where I'm intending to go, Malaysia. They have a prime minister who just came out again at the UN and called it out for what it is. They actually have values over there. And check it out, gay folk, you ain't getting no gay pride month over there. In fact, you better not do no French kissing and like, you know, your little parties and stuff over there. But you can do it in the bedroom if you want. They got different values over there. They don't have alcohol everywhere. You know, where have our values gone? And, and if we get back to it, it, it's social engineering. It's mind control. It's fear-based. It's, it's, all, it's all stuff that we could change. Fear controls the world, though. See, when you were in the Marines, what sort of stuff were you doing? So I was an infantryman. Would you have died for your country? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes, um, but 
I always say this when I when I tell my story. I went off to a war. I I actually I have my my medals and stuff. Yeah, because you were in the Gulf War. Was it 1990? Yeah, I was in Operation Desert Storm. Uh, uh, Operation um, uh, We Liberated Kuwait. Um, which funny enough, that's about is as noble a war as you could. You know, there's it's not, but it's about as close as we get. Funny enough. And that war was a soft war compared to like I, my my dear mate in uh, Virginia who lives there, Marcus. Um, he was in Afghanistan for the second uh, th the war on terror. Right, stepped on a landmine in Afghanistan, <laughs> legs gone like that. I asked him uh, in the last few months if he could go back. Would he just like step over that way, <laughs> you know? And you know what he said? He honestly said, he said no. He said no because. I, I wouldn't be the man I am today. So that 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 young brother of mine, 20 years my junior, values his ethics and his understanding and his commitment to God more than his legs. Most people wouldn't be willing to give up their three-car garage uh, to, to feed uh, a large number of people or stop a genocide. They want the penthouse, and now they want the better building. This is materialism. I've said it forever. Once you covet the material, Satan already has you. He already has you. But if you are, I said it in this film, Europa, The Last Battle, which is the most censored film on the planet, along with the greatest story never told. Um, some of us operate on a level, level that goes beyond the material. Th they say every man has a price. Bullshit. Bullshit. There isn't enough money in the fucking world to pay me to turn my back on my God and, and humanity. You know, I have kids too, but even if I didn't, what about the kids? What, fuck them? What are we leaving? Our parents messed up too, by the way. <laughs> they left us this mess, you know? Like, I don't. I, I want to be the generation that that either died in the battle to, to affect the change or made the change, and that is my goal. I mean, I, I gave a lecture not long ago with Sheikh Imam Hussein, and I literally cried when I thought about it because... I want to be, before I die, if I have the chance, if I'm not ripped to shreds, skinned alive with my fucking tattooed body put up on a raw child's wall. Um, <laughs> what are you going up? <laughs> uh, hey, man, I don't underestimate what those bastards will do to me if they do, if, if they get their chance. You know, God protects me and I'll accept whatever comes my way. But, um, you know, the day that that I, I never expected to see, I ain't entitled to shit, but I, I can see it, and it's ironic because this genocide that's being carried out now, you got to be a special kind of inhuman to not see this, man. Like, come on, man. There's over 15,000 dead kids. Most of the people there are dead. They have literally taken 2,000-pound bombs supplied by my birth nation, paid for by U.S. taxpayers, and they have taken out entire buildings. There are stories and videos of children you'd have to be inhuman not to feel the pain. Even if you're a supporter of Israel, surely you must have some humanity in you. Are not the kids innocent? Do we not have at least this amount of decency left in our own society? Well, it would seem that many do not. They covet the material more than they actually care about their own humanity. And they reject God in their own way. And they basically have taken the hand of Satan who offers all of the seductive enticements of materialism. This town epitomizes it. And here I am under investigation <laughs> for hate speech and uh, supporting a prescribed group, Hamas. And I didn't even say Hamas. I condemn all war crimes. Uh, who's the biggest war criminal? My birth nation. I've said that for over 20 years. Uh, I've always condemned it. I've served notice of that effect many times over. Um, I'm against that. I, I condemn it. And there's rules in war. You don't kill prisoners. You don't rape uh, women. You don't kill children. You don't destroy crops. You, you don't do these things. Um, and there's rules. If you any, Anyone who violates those, go fuck yourself, you, you bitch.